Hi everyone, uh, we are doing exercise three for the heredity lab. And so what I want you to do is grab a couple of things that you hopefully at ho have at home. Um, I want you to grab two cups. Uh, they don't have to be the same size. They could just be two cups or two bowls or even two plates if you want. Um, and I also want you to get um, two coins. Uh, I got two pennies. If you can do that, that would be great. Two nickels, two dimes, whatever. Um, just get two, because what we're gonna do is do exercise three, but instead of using beads of different colors, we're just gonna use heads and tails for this, okay? Um, so stop the video, go grab two cups and two coins. All right, so hopefully you have that. So what we're gonna do is have these coins represent the beads or the gammies for a particular organism. So I'm gonna first go over the first cup here. This first cup is gonna represent, as you can see in your exercise three, uh, fish, a fish that's heterozygous for fish color. Okay, so I've got um, a penny with tails and heads. Okay, heads is gonna represent big B and tails is gonna represent little b. So big B is dominant, right? That's the blue color. Red is recessive, that is the, um, that's gonna be the little b recessive, okay? So I'm gonna put that in here. This is my heterozygous fish. Now if the fish is heterozygous, is it gonna be blue or red? Okay, it's not gonna be purple because it's not in complete dominance, right? It's big B, little b, big B is gonna take over, so it's gonna be a blue fish, okay? So the phenotype is blue, whereas the genotype is gonna be big B, little b. All right, my other cup is another fish with the same thing, heterozygous, a head and a tail, right? So it's gonna be big B, little b, um, another blue fish. So I've got these two heterozygous fish. So what I'm gonna do now is I have the null hypothesis that there's no difference between my, my Punnett square that I would make for two heterozygous fish. So if I took big B, little b, and did a Punnett square with another big B, little b, I would look at that percentage and if I do this experimentally, my null hypothesis says that I don't expect to find a significant difference between the two. So how are we gonna do this experimentally? So you're gonna have to do this alone. It says in pairs, but you don't have a pair, so it's just you. Um, you are going to um, kind of maybe shake out the bees in here, don't look at them, uh, grab them out and lay them on the table however you grabbed them. So the way I grabbed it right now, I have a head and a tails. Whoops, I don't lose it. Um, so that means I have a heterozygous offspring. When these two gametes came together, I got a head and a tail, so they're heterozygous. So I'm gonna mark that down on a sheet of paper here. So I'm gonna make a column of big B, big B, a column for big B, little B, and one for little B, little B, okay? And so on here, it's a little backwards for you, but on here, I'm gonna tally big B, little B for this particular one. I'm gonna replace them, shake them around, grab them again without looking. What did I get? Okay, two little Bs, right? We said tails were little Bs. So I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna tally that up. And I'm gonna keep doing that 100 times to get my tally marks on this sheet of paper, um, and that is gonna give me my 100%, okay? Um, once I do that, I can go ahead and put that down in the lab report. Let me go to the lab report real quick. Um, in exercise three, uh, so you should be able to get numbers eight and nine, uh, and number 10, separating out that genotype to get the gametes. Um, and then made my Punnett square, that's number 12. Got my null hypothesis, that's 13. Did my tallying, that's number 14. Um, so my observed now phenotype and genotype is gonna be using um, my sheet here, okay? So we know on this sheet, the big B, big B, and the big B, little B are gonna be blue, and then the little B, little B is gonna be red, okay? So you're gonna add those up for your phenotype for, for blue and then your phenotype for red and then the genotype is just these letters. All right, um, so then for my number 16, what I'm gonna do 
is write down my expected from my Punnett square out of 100%, okay? So um, that's just gonna be from the four squares that I made, the expected genotype ratio, and then my observed would be my genotype numbers from my tally marks, okay? Um, and then if you look at the third row on number 16, it says deviation, that's the difference between the expected and, uh, and observed. So if my expected was 25, but my observed was 26, then I'm just gonna subtract, right? So it's gonna be one for my um, deviation. And then you square the deviation and then you divide by the expected number again. So if my deviation is squared, one squared is one. And then if I divide that by my 25, um, I get a tiny number, right? Um, and that would be what would go in the bottom uh, box on that last row where it says D squared divided by expected. And you're gonna do that for big B, big B, big B, little B, and little B, little B. So hopefully that helps you um, do all of that. Uh, as you can see for number 17, that's gonna um, get you to a chi-square. So you're gonna add up all the numbers in that last row and get a chi-square, and that should be a number smaller than 5.99.